Good morning, uh, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm Kim, and as you can hear, Tony is playing. He said to know you, Lord. Yeah. I talk to him all the time. I know he is. Yeah. You gotta know him. And that is coming from KIMR 94.5. That is our radio station, Keep It Moving 94.5. You can download the apps at um, iTunes for your iPhone and Androids at the Google Play Store. Um, we have a wonderful word today coming. But first I want to tell you about Interfaith Wealth Builders, our nonprofit organization where we go out into the world. And we help uh, people that are homeless or um, families that are in need. You know, God had compelled us and told us to go ye into all of the nations. But he didn't say just go into the nations to preach and to teach and take our businesses. He told us to go out there um, and help those in need because we know that we're connected in the spirit. So we just want to give a word of prayer and our websites, you can find us at www.kimwarner.com and at interfaithwealthbuilders uh, at gmail.com. That's the, um, I'm sorry, that's the um, email address. And um, ifwbuilders.com is the other website. I want to give a shout out to Kamoi Knight who does um, talk shows on our radio station. She talks about relevant things, topics today. Also to um, Lala, who does our commercials. I want to give a shout out to her. And I want to give a shout out to Josh. He also does talk shows on um, relevant things concerning young people today. So tune in and listen. Also turn in and listen, tune in and listen to the uh, wonderful music. Um, my name is Kim and I do recordings with Sherry. I also do recordings by myself, but I want you to listen in, listen to the topics that me and Sherry have talked about. We've talked about authenticity. We've talked about unity. God knows that we need it. And so the words that I've been recording here um, recently, um, visually, um, is... Um, wrapped around us understanding who we are in Christ and so we want to go into that from yesterday um, I brought up Romans um, 8 and 9 so excuse me if I said Romans 9 I meant Romans uh, 8 and 9 I had went into the verse because my mind is always going into where I want to be which is into the word so forgive me for that so um, I'm just going to say Lord you know pray for us all uh, Lord thank you for blessing us. Thank you for a um, spirit of prosperity and increase. And thank you, Lord God, as you increase the households and the families today, Lord God, that you touch every infirmity and uh, every spirit of divorce be broken and bound in the heavens and in the earth and every spirit of hindrance in families be broken and bound because God we know that the nature of family started with you and Adam and so from the beginning you had intended men and women to uh, be together and to uh, build your kingdom and so we want to talk about kingdom building so God give us your word and bless us deed and deed bless us indeed in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah so yesterday as i was saying i was reading from romans um, 8 and 9 and it says however you are not living in the flesh controlled by the sinful nature but in the spirit in fact the spirit of god lives in you directing and guiding you and so in this here uh, we want to captivate people that are not saved, that are listening, and we want to help those that are spirit-filled go further because a lot of times people will get caught up in things in the sinful nature and they won't know how to, you know, get out of them. And a lot, at this point in time, many people are crying out for God, but they don't understand that God is already in them, with them. Um, in Luke 17 and 21, um, Jesus spoke and he said, the kingdom of God is within you. So as we focus on the kingdom of God being within us, uh, what we have to do is begin to turn within and look at ourselves within, recognize how we feel about ourselves, recognize, uh, you know, if we have a love walk with ourselves, you know, and then we can go into Deuteronomy 
um, 5 and see where God says that the first commandment, which lined up with what Jesus was saying in the new commandment, is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And the reasons for us loving ourselves and God, you know, coming together as the bridegroom and that marriage taking place is that without that we can't love anybody else. We can't love ourselves without God. Um, love and we can't love our mates we can't love our children you know we love superficially until we meet with the living God so when Jesus speaks about seek ye first the kingdom of heaven he's saying seek because on all accounts everything that you need is in the spirit realm when we talk about um, the Bible and words from the Bible there is no topic that has to do with the natural realm the spirit realm is where we were first born and so from that realm uh, we have to go back recognize who we are and the power and the authority that we had already when we came here and I say had because many of us don't realize the, the power and authority that we have um, yesterday we talked about um, the sinful nature and the power that it has uh, as if a woman and a man um, commits adultery um, the first partaking of the adultery is to think about it so that's why Paul gave us the scriptures in Ephesians and he said cast down vain imaginations well that's in Corinthians but when we put on the whole armor in Ephesians uh, what happens is we're able to battle these things. This is not people and things outside of us. We have to bring ourselves into submission with Christ before we can even work with enemies outside of us. And if we don't get the picture that everything is within us or the kingdom of God lives within us, then we're fighting a losing battle because we don't know where the kingdom is located. We don't really understand our purpose and we're not working in the area that needs to be brought into submission, which is within ourselves. So anyway, Paul said, cast down vain imaginations. When we're thinking of things outside of ourselves or outside of the commitments we've made, the commitments with God, the commitments with our family and our children, we have to begin to cast them down. A mother or father that has went stray or left their children can combat that. They don't have to succumb to the thoughts of leaving or, you know, feeling that they can't handle the pressure of being a mother and a father. Um, what they can do is go to the Word of God and combat those thoughts. Um, this time and day, what's happening is people are under a lot of pressure um, for the commitments that they made to the world. And the Bible tells us that we're in this world, but not of it. The understanding of not being in this world has to do with locating the nature of who we are, our truth. And in that nature, we find that in Luke 17 and 21, it said that, you know, the kingdom of God lived in us. If the kingdom lives within us, then there's some work to do to understand the process of building a kingdom or understanding what kingdoms do. Here on earth, we see kingdoms in the perspective. Um, when we look at Prince Charles and, you know, princes that are over um, in Europe, you know, these people that have access to ruling the world, these uh, the queen and all of these people. And what we find is, is that from the beginning, they're nurtured as kings and queens. They're called queen or prince. And so we have to get back to recognizing and calling ourselves these things. Like, I am a minister. But, you know, I don't think that I have to tell people that. Because when I minister, what I'm doing is administering a word of understanding to take people to another level. So... Anyway, you walk in in authority and you know who you are because you have been titled with a name. So at this point in time, when you're building the kingdom from within, you got to see the kingdom within. That means that nothing is impossible within because God lives within. And if God created all of the world, God can do all things for us. Amen. And that means that even when I had recorded yesterday, God being our father, I and my father are one. John talks about because I and my father are one. Um, I cannot stay a child. You know, the princes and uh, the queens and kings over there, they couldn't stay children. And so they had to grow up and then they took the throne. Here we are, you know, in the nature of understanding who we are spiritually parallel to 
um, our natural, but our natural and the spiritual gets confused because we don't remember who we are. If my father sits on the throne of grace and Jesus came and said, I am my father, I one," And Jesus said that he was um, training disciples. Disciples became apostles for a reason. And the reason was, is that from level to level and glory to glory, the more we understand from the spiritual aspect of ourselves, the more we grow into that truth of who we really are. If God sent us here, to do a work that means that that same work that God sent us here to do is available through us if we can process the fact that ye are all little gods all right a, a child cannot stay a child a man and a woman they grow up into being men and women women therefore what is happening is God is trying to get us to understand through Christ's teaching that we are all sons and daughters of his. But even as sons and daughters, we've been adopted into um, the sonship of taking uh, the throne, the promise that was given to us. But if we cannot locate or understand that we are gods, then we miss the mark. All right. And so. In John 1, John speaks about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And because the Word was with God, everything that we are able to speak becomes a part of our reality, our thinking. When we go back and we talk about a woman and a man that committed adultery, they first started thinking about it. So if you think that you're a queen and you begin to speak it, then you're going to begin to feel like a queen. Amen. And some people might say, oh, this is not true. But I tell you what, if you challenge yourself to go back and think about things that you thought about and you seem to manifest good or bad, you'll recognize the power of God that lives within you. The reason for the spiritual equipping is that we come into the righteousness of Christ and we don't stay in and the corruptible spirit which means that there's two parts of us and we're fighting you know uh one is fighting for a stronger accountability in our lives. We know that the thief came to seek, steal, and destroy, but some people haven't recognized that the thief is that person that they struggle with within themselves. So over here, Jesus has given us the ability to have more uh, life, the abundant life, but we don't take it because we don't understand that abundance is in him and all we have to do is follow him let go of our control uh, mechanisms within us and in our flesh denounce the flesh bind it up and say no i'm following god this is where it all is so within you the kingdom of god lives seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all things shall be added unto you but if our minds can't process and think this on a relative basis as we think about our bills and as we think about our relationships, how, we, how much we love them, if we can't process in our minds the way we process about natural things, um, we'll never get the spiritual uh, part right. And the spiritual part is simply, like he says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you're seeking, look at it from the heavenly perspective. Look at it in the spirit realm, which means that you have to go within your mind and you have to begin to think on those things that are lovely and pure. You have to begin to say, you know what, I'm not claiming I don't have money anymore. Right now, I believe my father has given me everything because he is my father and he created all things. He created me to have all things, but I got to get my mind right with my father's. I have to think on the things that my father is thinking. I can't think like uh, the world thinks. I have to think in spite of the natural, what it looked like. I have to think uh, with faith like Peter and see those things as though they were. This is the word. I have to speak those things as though they are sickness. No, I don't feel that. I, I, I bind up sickness. I bind up um, anger. I don't feel that way because these things take away from the promise of God, which gives us access to the kingdom. We already have everything. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. How can you pray about dwelling in the secret place but not realize that the secret place gives you access? To everything that you want. You know, Jesus said, you know, in um, John 10, that I am the doorkeeper. I give you the ability to go to and fro concerning the pasture. I give you the ability to go in and out, meaning that I'm giving you the ability to go into the spirit. How? Because when you met me, 
when you became saved, my training with you, the discipleship, gave you the ability in faith to believe and see the things as though they are. To speak those things as though they are. Because if John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. Listen. Even the word that we, we read according to Christ uh, and the word uh, in the Bible, we got to get an understanding of what's going on in this Bible because every word that you read is God. The Bible is a living application of the word of God, but the word of God is God. All right. And so I want to read this here in John 10. He said, for my father who has given me, given them to me, is greater and mighty than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus is bragging on the children that have been brought to him. Even the ones that have been adopted into the adoption of wit right now. He's saying, my Father gave me these children and nobody can snatch them out. Which means that there is a foundation set in them. You know, back then he was already setting up the foundation of the earth for us and saying who we are. Nobody can have them. They might have some challenges and some struggles, but nobody else is going to get them because God gave them to me. Why? Because they gave their life to Christ. They are no more in no uh, situations of thinking that they're in control. They know that their money, their bills, their children, their husbands, their wives, they know that everything that concerns them had to be delivered and given over to God in order for them to make this journey and they are that you know they feel compelled about this journey they know that whatever is going on in their lives if they give it to Jesus and they go on and walk the journey that their growth in Christ is going to compel them to be more and to walk into the authority of who they are because that's what the training was all about okay all right so in 31 it says again the Jews picked up stones to throw at him. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works and many acts of mercy from the Father. He never proclaims this. He says from the Father. And where's the Father operating at? From within. This identification of Jesus, and Jesus in the Bible states that he's our brother after we get to a certain place. And we can look at that in John 15, by the way. Jesus is telling them, the Father and I are one. Me and my Father are one. I speak today. Me and my father are one, you know, to get a greater understanding of me and my father and what I'm here to do. I must proclaim that me and my father are one because I am walking in the life of Christ. I'm not outside of Christ. I'm walking in the life of Christ, which means that daily I take up the bread of life and I eat on it to know and get guidance from the spirit realm on what I am to do and how I'm to do these things uh, that I'm compelled to do from God the commandments that he's given me or what I was purposed to do in this life so again he says the Jews answered we are not going to stone you for a good work but for blasphemy now how many people all over the world still teaching in ministries are telling you that when you confess um, Luke 17 and 21 the kingdom of God lives within me that you are creating blasphemy that's the word of God. You know, again, I talked about Philippians. Philippians said, um, I, I can't remember the number exactly, and I didn't pull it up. But Philippians tells us, count it not robbery to, to find that you are equal th with God. And in um, Psalms, you know, um, it talks about you are all little gods. And they want to, black, they want to stone Jesus for saying that... Um, he and his father are one, meaning that he is God. All right. So let's read this again. In John 10 and 34, Jesus answered them, it is not written um, in your law. I said you are all gods. Um, human judges representing God, not divine beings. OK, so Jesus then challenged them with their own word because it is over in the Old Testament. Um, and I brought this up because if someone else had read or listened to any of my tapings, um, I'm always pushing um, the fact of what he's saying. I said you are all gods. And this is written in, um, in the law. And so um, they said they were going to blast. They were going to stone him for blasphemy. Um, how can you stone somebody 
for what's written in the word of God. Um, you know, many, many of us, I mean, uh, you can't count how many Christians there are. And Christianity was brought up and it has um, promoted itself to the place of uh, Jesus Christ and given an understanding of who we are. I mean, that's what he came to do. We did not come here um, to do all of the things that we've been doing other than to come and make a world a better place. And God has given the power and authority through our understanding and through our acceptance of who we are written in the word of God to do these things. But without, again, acceptance, we cannot do it. So Jesus answered them again. It is not written in your law. And that's a question. I said you are all God's. And so 35 says, if he called them gods, men to whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be undone or annulled. And um, if that is true, then do you say of him whom the father sanctified and set apart for himself and sent into the world, you are blaspheming uh, because I said, I am the son of God. So he questions them. And the purpose of that, you know, just to read the scriptures, he's he's challenging them. OK, so. Are you telling me that the word of God is not true? The words that you guys um, talk about in your religious sessions? You know, so, you know, we have religious teachers and we have people that are definitely worshiping God in spirit and truth. And because we're worshiping in spirit and truth, we understand that the spirit nature is where we live and the spirit nature is where we work at. We work at pulling down strongholds in the spirit as well as seeing and believing that our finances are paid off. Uh, seeing the errors of our ways are... Um, our change everything that happens for us we have to see it in the spirit realm first and we get that because i and my father are one you know god is not outside of us again god is within so john um one and ten he came into the very world he created but the world did not recognize him now how many of us realize or can think on this word and see that as we read the word of god we don't take it literally and see it as the power and the authority that walks among the earth right now. For the word of God came and it walked amongst us and it became one with us. All right. John says it again and I'm repeating. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. The world does not recognize the word of God in the entirety. Many people are suffering because... They have a, a nature of sin and they want to hold on to it, really. I mean, some people are saying, oh, I want to be delivered. But where there's a will, there's a way. You know, I want to be delivered from the bills. I want to be delivered from the hurt and the pain. I want to be delivered from adultery. I want to be delivered from gossip. I want to be delivered from thievery. I want to be delivered. But let me tell you, if you can't go back and, and love God, um, who is the beginning of who you are, with all your heart, your mind, and soul, it's going to be hard getting that. Because the willfulness of love is the beginning of um, binding up and um, that love that kills a multitude of sin. Sin has to die. Or it's very hard to come into the place of understanding who you are. Because if we don't change something that we've been doing, then how can we become uh, something different? If we don't change our minds... How can uh, our hearts change? Our mind changes and our heart changes because the heart and the mind, it, it functions as one. And so he came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him because they don't recognize the spirit in the word. The letter killeth, but the spirit brings life. And the spirit is in the word of God. As I think and I meditate on the word, the word becomes one with me i am the living word and i walk and i talk in the word only you know and this is this is what jesus was talking about flesh must die because the flesh speaks and it thinks on things that are not relevant to the word of god and to the goodness that he has for his children and when his children grow up being a king or a queen we think as our mothers and fathers tell us in kingship 
But if we cannot change our hearts and minds to believe how great we are and the greatness of God that lives in us, then we continue in the sinful nature because we have not accepted the true adoption to wit. You know, in Romans 8, it says we are more than conquerors. And we are. But when we leave out of our house, if our flesh weakens us or makes us feel that we are not able to um, accomplish something, then what happens is, is that we retreat back to that old mindset. No, no, I keep on thinking greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me because the greatness in me is going to rise to take on the challenge and overcome the challenge for me. I as Kim can do nothing, but I in Christ can do all things. And that's what we have to think on. Think on who we are and the power of God that lives within us. Know that the power of God is working for us even as we think negative because the negative, we pull negative to us. But we want to think on the positive. We want to think, yes, God can pay off my bills. God can uh, set me free in my debt because Deuteronomy 5, I mean 15 and 2 says this is the day of the debtor and the exactor. Today my debts are being paid off and I'm going to give you another one over in Romans um, 8, 11 through 13, he said, for those who walk by the flesh, no, walk by the spirit, owe no debt to man. If you walk by the spirit, you owe no debt to man because you live in the spirit realm. You do not live in the flesh. Amen. And I know that can be hard for some people to understand, but when I, talking about reigning as king in a kingdom, when I was in over my head in debt, I remembered, I asked God when a debt collector called and he said, um, well, we're just going to take you to court. I remember asking God after that, well, God, you said you were going to pay off my debt. You know, I challenged him. I was humble, but I, I was in question because God, you said you were going to do all these things for me and look at what is being said to me. All right. God came back and gave me Romans um, 8. 11 through 13 and I began to meditate on that word and I you know I separated that those questions those words and it said if you walk by the spirit you owe no debt to man and I am born again and I walk by the spirit so that word became alive in me it became walking and talking flesh in and through me because guess what God came through and he paid off all of my debt. That debt collector silenced by the word of God. I want to leave you with that today. Because while I've been talking, I have been t talking about authentic living and giving us all a word of knowledge on who we are. If we think and we believe on the word of God, it is so. It takes every fiber of your being to believe in the word of God opposed to what you see outside because you're living in a world that is natural this is what you're used to but try something different try and think on for 30 days my debts are paid off and align the scriptures of debt um cancellation with it deuteronomy 15 and 2 and see won't your father in you because you're working from another realm do it for you i i challenge you amen now this is kim with uh KIMR 94.5 Keep It Moving Radio. We have a you know a, a nonprofit organization, IFW um, Builders, um, which feeds those that are homeless and it gives to children that are in need. And we need your help and we need your assistance. Go to www.kimwarner.com. Also, you can go to www.ifwbuilders at gmail.com. And you can uh, make a donation. You can read about us. You can get involved. We're all over the world. Um, we thank God for your life. We thank God for the mercy and the grace. Um, download your apps um, for your iPhone for KIMR 94.5 at iTunes and in the Google Store for um, um, Android phones. And um, we'll be back with you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Just uh, keep that thought on I and my Father are one. Because even if it doesn't sound... Um, uh, 
like something that you're used to hearing, remember Luke 17 and 21. The kingdom of God is within you. And then go back and think about why God really says, seek ye first the kingdom. You can't think on natural things and then think on spirit uh, things. you got to remain in the spirit when you're trying to uh, transform your heart and mind because your heart and mind has been used to thinking natural things. But Jesus came that we will have a different type of life, an abundant life. And the abundant life is receiving the truth of what lives within us. It's inside. It's not outside of us. We have to begin to meditate and think on those things that are lovely and pure. Think on the things that we need to solve the problem. Don't think on the solution. No, I mean, the, to solve the problem. Don't think on the problem no more. Think on the solution. What is it? And ask God. To help you understand, remind you of what the solution is because we're kindred. We're one with him. I and my father are one. Amen. Have a great day. Amen. Blessings.